the seventh generation rolls along and Microsoft pulls a sneak attack on everyone and releases the Xbox 360 a year earlier than the PlayStation 3. I'm here to start you on a journey into the future of entertainment. That future starts right here, right now. So, a year goes by with Xbox 360 being the only next-gen HD console on the market. And people start going to it. I chose Rapture. There's four things that the Xbox 360 probably should be recognized for in history. One is Xbox Live. Game ah. Double kill. The idea of popularizing an online service for console gamers to all play against each other and with each other, or to download copies of Minecraft and sort of share worlds together. And Xbox Live has been a huge force in gaming. Connect. Didn't really lead to any great games, but the idea of jumping around in front of your television, it made gaming even more of a mass appeal activity. Achievements. We've also added a new concept called achievements. Now these are sort of a record of everything you've accomplished across your entire library of games. People love that idea. People would play the worst games ever just so that they could raise their achievement score. You can download Netflix and you can stream movies to your console. Without realizing it, Sony is giving them. And they, Sony was giving them the rope thinking they'd hang themselves, I think. PS3, they sort of came in arrogant. They came in saying, you know, you're gonna get a second job to be able to afford this system. Meanwhile, Sony thought that they could come out, rest on their laurels, be the PlayStation brand and get everybody back. They can't. They don't have anything with it. They, they double down, right? Oh, well, the PlayStation 2 sold well because of DVD. So now the new one will be Blu-ray. With so much space on a single Blu-ray disc, the only thing you'll need more of is time. But again, Sony's betting on technology people don't even have the technology for yet. How many people, when the PlayStation 3 come out, have an HD TV at the time? And so the PS3 was not a very good machine for a couple of years. I had everything under control until they blew up the boat. <laughs> and then Sony got smart. They recognized the error of their ways, they found humility, they redesigned the machine, they slimmed it down. And the PS3 in the long run, after a slow start, turned out to be a, a quite an enjoyable machine to play games on. And you have a really a wonderful array of games. So what you got? What do I got? Two words. Montage. <laughs> Now all this is happening. The HD twins are colliding, duking it out. Sony is losing. And again, in the background, there's these other kids lining up for a Wii. We would like to play. The Wii came out kind of out of nowhere. It was a console that everyone could play. That's what led to it being such a, such a popular, popular hit. So many people throughout the industry, myself included, we'd see it and say, well, why would anyone want to play a game that way? Why would anyone want to do this when they're playing instead of doing this? And it just took the world by storm. This was the biggest Trojan horse I think anyone's ever pulled off. Nintendo sold it to the gamer, but they brought it in with this Wii Sports game that they knew people would come in and see and get blown away by. And that's when you see these articles, right, of, oh man, every retirement home's got a Wii now. People love bowling, they love this, blah, blah. At this retirement community in New Jersey, you'll find cards, music, but the main attraction here is video games for more than a year, more than a year, you couldn't walk into a store and buy a Wii. And more bad news for holiday shoppers, nearly a year after the Wii's debut, Nintendo is still having supply problems with the video game console. And you're like, what is happening with video games right now? That there are these two expensive HD devices literally destroying each other, and then over here, sprinting away from what everybody else is doing, Nintendo is winning. And now granted, they didn't pay out to gamers in the end, right? They loved it, they sold a ton of them, but they used it primarily to do one thing, it was to play Wii Sports. This brought me back to the old days before the Atari 2600, where everyone just had Pong machines. You're watching the most exciting game you will ever see on your TV set. Or you just hook this thing up to your console and it could do one thing, it could play Pong. Suddenly, third-party developers see, look at how many units are in people's houses right now, and like, let's make all, just stop what you're doing, put all of the crazy ass mini games you can onto discs and let's get them out to these Wii, you know, Wii families. People want to play bingo. People want to do this. They want, and suddenly, like, there's a glut of Nintendo Wii games and a lot of them are shovelware. Cruise around the world as you perform tons of different dance moves. And 
you get this bad taste in your mouth that, once again, Nintendo is only playing with the toys in their sandbox and alienating everybody else. And so the seventh generation of gaming is not just important for gaming, but it's also important for how much more these consoles proved that they were able to do. It really became a generation of entertainment as much as it was about gaming. And now, of course, we come to the eighth and final generation, the generation that makes my back hurt, makes me feel old, makes me feel creepy. We've got the Wii U, PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One. You've got Microsoft versus Sony right now, and I think uh, without that type of rivalry, I think things would get stagnant very quickly, and you wouldn't see the advances that you're seeing today. And that has definitely caused every fanboy out there to decide, you know, why the PS4 is just terrible, or the Xbox is just the one, is just the worst system ever. Well, phrase for one thing, it's uh, 100, 100 is cheaper. I think the Xbox overall is a more balanced system. Microsoft's stance on a lot of personal rights issues have uh, rubbed me the wrong way. The PS4 just cannot match the teams that Microsoft has. And in the end, we always, it's, it's not apples to oranges, it's apples to apples. They're video games and they're great and each one of them has awesome exclusives and each one of them has a number of problems. Of course, always on the periphery and potentially always ready to upend everything is Nintendo and who knows who else. Trying to come in and basically challenge the idea that a PlayStation or an Xbox is the thing that you should be playing games on at home. The current generation of consoles have a big question mark hanging over their existence, really. There are valid questions out there as to whether these boxes are still the things that make sense to be playing games on, even onto your television. In an era when you can have a portable, uh, like an iPad or something like that, that can output to your TV. Odyssey. So, you know, games started off as toys for kids. To machines that have created experience that I think people recognize as a fundamental part of American and world culture. You can compare us to other popular forms of entertainment and see the same fights even, right? Dee Snyder testifying in front of Congress for freedom of speech. Clear evidence of Twisted Sisters music being completely misinterpreted and unfairly judged by supposedly well-informed adults. Suddenly, video games have to do the same thing. Can Grand Theft Auto come out and say all this stuff? Could send shivers down your spine if you hear these three words, Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Modern Warfare 2. Mass Effect. Your kids into video games? No. Okay, well, that, that's a good thing. You're starting to see an era where even the way games are rated by the press is starting to become more and more similar to the evolution of how films have been rated. And now you are seeing a generation of people who have been raised with video games in their living rooms, in their lives, on their phones, every day of their lives. Video games have been around long enough now where we're at the tipping point. And when we're all dead and gone, people will be looking back on video games like the most important type of entertainment that ever existed because it was interactive entertainment and it wasn't passive. Imagine the generation right now who their first video game console is the PlayStation 4, is the Xbox One. What are they going to be making in 30 years? That's the future of video games, that there is no limit, there is no end, there is no way to predict what will happen next. What's going to happen? Are people just going to use their smartphones to play games? Are people going to go back to using their computers to play games? Are boxes going to shrink into nothing and just be embedded in your TV? I don't know. All I know is when I get out of bed in the morning, my back hurts. I'm old. There's been eight generations of consoles. What more do you want?